Last time you remember, we uh, left the pedals in the evapo rust and also the gooseneck. Wanted to give you an update on that. Um, pedals came out really well. Uh, and again, the evapo rust doesn't seem to affect the grease and the bearings, although I will, uh, uh, with my small pick, get a little bit more grease in there and down in there on the front. Same for the other side. And we'll put those back together again today. And then the inside of the uh, gooseneck here, where uh, the handlebars go in, was completely rusted. And that came out really well. So uh, evapo rust absolutely works as advertised. So today we're going to clean up the chain, which has been soaking in the solvent for several days. And we're gonna start on the frame. Uh, we'll wash it up and let it dry for a couple of days before we start with the compound and the wax. That's what's happening on this episode of Featherstone Bicycles. So before we get started putting the pedals back together, um, we'll get this uh, gooseneck all put together so that we don't lose the parts. And we're gonna put a little bit of our finish line dry Teflon. I don't know if this is totally necessary, but I figure a little bit on there certainly can't hurt. And then as far as the cinch bolt, definitely put some on here. All right, that's all ready for final assembly. Now for the grease in the pedals, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease out here on my paper towel. Put my glasses on so I can see. And put a little bit on the pick. And try to get it down in there into where the bearings are. So in order to get the uh, reflectors into these slots here, um, probably not absolutely necessary putting them in more so for taking them out, but I still just like to put some heat on these, uh, 
whatever you want to call these, to uh, uh, pl make them pl a little bit more pliable so they fit in and don't crack. So I've got a heat gun here. We're going to get started on washing the frame. Well, basically, I've got some uh, Dawn dishwashing detergent in a bucket here with some hot water. And we'll just start getting it on the frame. And I'm going to use a little toothbrush in there as well to get around the uh, smaller parts. That, by far, in 15 plus years of doing this, is the dirtiest frame I have ever worked on. And it wasn't dirt. It was a lot of grease, a lot of caked on grease, which is probably from the fact that they greased the chain, which is, again, a big no-no. So the grease went everywhere. Uh, but tar, they went through some tar, liquid tar, uh, on a road or something, and uh, I'm going to have to get some bug and tar remover or just some straight tar remover. I don't know what. I've never really had a bike that's had that much tar on it because um, I don't think the compound is going to be able to get that off, and I don't want to rub the compound on so much to take that off that I'm taking off too much of the layers of paint. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show you was that uh, I had all of the um, hardware for the fork on there in the right order, um, but obviously I had to take that all off uh, to clean it. So I put it all in order and then put a zip tie around it so that um, I can remember 
uh, which way the bearings uh, cages go and whatnot. The other thing is that on the head tube, um, this was not the original Schwinn head badge that was on there. And these were not the original screws. When I got the bike, uh, it was actually missing the head badge. And the local bike shop that I got it from, we scrounged around and found uh, a head badge that was just loose and some loose screws. And I thought they would fit, but they don't. Plus this head badge is in pretty bad shape. I know I can find a better one over there at that bike shop. So I'm just going to keep this on the side and um, get something better. All right, moving on to the chain. So we've had it soaking here in the solvent um, for at least a couple of days. And one thing I wanted to mention about the chain, removing the chain, is that use a little tool. This is a Park Tool CT5 for breaking a chain. And most of you may know this, but if you're going to be getting involved in a restoration and you've never done this before, uh, I want to give you a hint and a word of warning. The way that this works, let me just show that first. Link fits in there like that. And then you screw this. It lines up perfectly with a pin, one of the side pins and it pushes it through. And this holds, this tool holds it all firmly in place so that you're pushing it straight. Absolutely positively under no circumstances do you want to push this pin all the way out. If you do that, you're out of luck. You're going to have to, uh, you, cause you're never gonna get that pin back in. So you have to push it uh, just to the point where you can remove this middle type link, um, which is the other side of it is over here. So what we're gonna do now is get this so it's not all crisscrossed. And then I'm gonna put solvent in here, you can see how much grease and crap, grime, excuse me, was, was on that chain. And I'm still gonna put more solvent in here. Just for extra measure. And I'm going to take a toothbrush and working my way from the end, one of the broken ends.
So, now that I've rinsed it off, um, I seriously doubt this is going to show up in the camera, but even in spite of all that soaking in the solvent and whatnot, there still is parts of a lot of grease and whatnot. And the quickest way I know to do this is on the wire wheel. Regular viewers of the channel know uh, what happens next. I take the chain after I've had it on the wire wheel. I get our can of finish line one step cleaner and lubricant for chains, gears, and derailleurs. Uh, this is what you should be using on your chain, not what the previous owner of this bike did, which was put grease on it. I spray it all down both sides and work everything work it in there and I'm going to let it soak in that sorry for all the dinging noise Get rid of that for a second. Wow, that was way more work than what I thought was going to happen when I walked in the shop today. So we got ourselves through it, and um, I am going to order the um, tires and tubes and rim strips before we get going on the wheels. So next episode, I'll probably get into either the derailleur and the shifter or the crank and the bearings. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. Check out the description. Uh, check out the podcast in the description for an Army of Normal Folks uh, podcast. I think you'll enjoy that. And I hope to see you next time on Featherstone Bicycles. <music>